All right, so welcome to today's ANS English Live lesson. We are going to continue looking at sample candidate responses because some AS students at the moment will be writing their exams in October. And I think it's always a nice um, exercise to go through the kinds of responses students have written in the exams. So this continues on from the last two live lessons where we have been looking at sample candidate responses. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. Um, let me move this over here. And let me see if I can bring the chat box out over here. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's have a look at, I'm going to have to bring this here, sorry. Let's have a look at today's uh, response or candidate example. This is for a paper two question. And uh, we've been looking at paper one in the past two live lessons, and now we're going to look at paper two. Okay. And in particular, we're going to look at question two under section A. Now, section A is imaginative writing. And remember, you'll be getting to answer, you will answer a question on section A, and you'll answer a question on section B. You have to choose one of the three options. And for today's lesson, I would look, like to look at the option that offers you the chance to create two contrasting pieces. And um, I want to see how a student has gone about doing that. And I want you to think about how you would have gone about doing that as a comparative exercise to what they have produced, okay? So, the question says, write two contrasting pieces of 300 to 450 words each, okay? So that's about, I would say, two to two and a half pages. Um, the first about a town in the present day, and the second about the same town in 50 years time. In your writing, create a sense of place and atmosphere. So just remember that when you are, when you read through your question, you've got to make sure that you are focusing on what the question is asking of you. So you're going to have two pieces. They've got to be a certain length, let's say two pages each. Um, the first is going to be about a town, a town in the present day, and the second about the same town in 50 years' time, so in the future. Not only that, you have to create a sense of place and atmosphere, convey the sense of the place very strongly in the writing. So in other words, is this going to be a story? No, it's going to be descriptive because it's all about describing a place, okay? So it is not narrative, it is descriptive writing. Okay, now, let's go and have a look at what the, the student produced. So the first thing is that they've made a plan and that's great, that's good. You don't get marks for making a plan, but the marker might be happy to see that at least an attempt was made at some sort of plan, even if it was just keywords, that's fine. Let's have a read through this response. Um, I'm going to make it a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And um, for now, I think I'm just going to close the chat box, but I will hopefully notice if you do have a question or you want to make a statement about something. Okay. So, in Amsterdam, the canals run through the whole place. What does the examiner say about this? There is an immediate task focus on the description of a city or town as the task is to contrast a town 50 years later in the second piece. So in other words, the student has immediately gone on into the topic without wasting time. Amsterdam, the canals run through the whole place and we are in the present. Everywhere you turn, you are not quite sure if you've been there before. The canals are soothing to look at and somewhat relaxing. On the canals, boats rest. Every boat you can imagine from houseboats to pedal boats. Along the walls of the canals, houseboats are connected to the sewage system. You come across some very posh houseboats, and then you see some that can only be described as hippie. Still fantastic to look at. It is a, it's a bit, um, a bit strange at this point in time, but colloquial in places, but okay. Along with all the canals comes bridges. So there's an error here, there's a grammatical error, along with all the canals come bridges, okay, not comes. All 14,000 of them. To add to this, they all look very alike. 
you can easily mistake one bridge for another and you will end up going in a completely different direction. But it's all part of the fun of the place. A talking point of this beautiful city is the Anne Frank House. Okay, let's move down. The long queue is worth standing in so you can walk around the historical house. It stands tall, looking out onto the canal and a little row of shops. It is sandwiched between two even taller houses. There's a nice use of vocabulary there to create an image. Not to give too much away, it's an extraordinary experience that shouldn't be missed. It's eye-opening to what was really happening and makes you feel grateful that you don't have to live like that. I feel that if you're going to describe Anne Frank's house, you need to be a little bit more descriptive and not just generic. We still don't have an idea of what the place looked like inside. So more focus on attention to detail might have helped in this particular section. All right, let's move down. Amsterdam is full to the brim with small independent shops. Every side road is saturated with exquisite pieces and the odd cafe. What did the examiners say here about saturated? Some ambitious vocabulary is used to give variation to the expression. So they liked it, so like the use of ambitious vocabulary where needed. Okay, don't overdo this kind of thing. In each shop window, there is something different that will no doubt catch your eye. Whether it's the bohemian dress sense or the rock and roll style jewelry. And here there was a fragmented sentence, incomplete sentence. There is a souvenir guarantee. And then there were some spelling errors. And there are spelling errors throughout that the examiner doesn't pick up on. So I don't know why they, they picked up on these two words in particular. But anyway. Finally, you will have never seen bikes quite like these. The vast number of them and the low quality, their incomplete idea, bikes have become so popular that rules have been made. You cannot lock your bikes in certain places or it will be taken away. If you want it back, you have to pay. However, most of the bikes aren't worth keeping. If you do fancy a stroll along the canal, keep to the pavements as these cyclists don't hold back. Okay, there's a good use of idiomatic language there, everyday language. The cyclists um, don't hold back, they just go as fast as they want. They pedal fast, they travel fast. There's a nice structure there, they, they pedal fast, they travel fast. Perhaps because their brakes don't work. There's another spelling error. Okay. In Amsterdam, the canals are filled with muddy water that occasionally overflows and the water runs riot throughout the roads. Okay, so here now we start the contrasting piece. Um, the contrasting piece sets up a description of the same town 50 years later. And perhaps this is apparent simply by the space that is left between the two paragraphs. And don't worry if you're late, it's just nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. So now we're going, we're looking at two contrasting pieces, one that looks at the city at this point in time, and then one that looks at the city in the future. And we're going to see if the descriptive element of this exercise comes through in what the student has produced. So we're back in Amsterdam now, we're 50 years later. Let's have a look. In Amsterdam, the canals are filled with muddy water that occasionally overflows, and the water runs riot throughout the roads. They are dull and boring to watch. So there's nothing uh, attractive about the canals as was suggested in the first piece. They show nothing but sadness and neglect. The number of houseboats has dramatically decreased since the quality of the water deteriorated. Unfortunately, the number of large boats similar to barges has increased causing the waterworks to be congested and avoided by those who used the pedal boats. Okay, so there's some spelling errors, there's fragmented sentences, which means thoughts are not complete. Okay. Which, I may add, have become in such a state that they cannot be used, the pedal boats cannot be used. The pedals are rusty and they are now homes for city wildlife. So in other words, in the future, things have deteriorated. 
the bridges have been rebuilt in the last 25 to 50 years. Instead of being built of stone, they are now an eyesore and are built from concrete and steel bars. If you were to take a photo of a bridge and the canal, it would not have the same effect as it did 50 years ago. Each bridge has a name now and it is in big letters next to it. So there's no chance of having that excited, slightly terrified feeling of being lost and on an adventure. But the student has tried to think of some negative aspect to having the bridges named now. Okay, well, that's not bad, it's not a bad idea. The fantastic Anne Frank house is now surrounded by nothing but gloomy canals and modernized buildings and houses. It stands out like a sore thumb. So this was a good use of simile. Um, I think that's quite a good image to create there that this house now looks so different to all the buildings around it. And um, I'm surprised that the examiner didn't comment on that. Anyway, although it's an important part of Amsterdam's history, it doesn't look a part anymore. Okay, so here is a bit of a strange thing, a bit of strange expression. Okay, although it's an important part of Amsterdam's history, it doesn't look a part anymore, a part of it, because you could mistake this for a spelling error, as in it's a part, but it's not, it's a part. So just watch out for how you, ex how you express yourself. Make sure that you're not um, ambiguous or unclear in what you're trying to say. It looks like someone has taken it from somewhere else and squished it in a gap, squished it. Squished is non-standard English. <laughs> well, that's quite imaginative. Um, squeezed would have been a better choice or even squished. I think perhaps the student mixed up the two words and combined them into squished. Squeezed or squished. Okay, then we'll start with a fragment sentence. This is not a full sentence. Small independent shops. Okay, well, just um, be a bit more precise here. Is this an incomplete idea that was carrying on from before or where are we now? So, small independent shops. What small independent shops? Here the examiner liked the second part, a rhetorical question, to add a language effect. That of a character who sounds disappointed with the new Amsterdam. So just if that first sentence had been expressed a bit better, I think it would have worked well. Instead of having this, um, um, you know, you, you could have had a, a plethora of small independent shops, question mark. What small independent shops, question mark, okay? So that might have worked a bit better because then you know that the idea is moving on to something else. Every road is filled with big branded shops. To make things worse, there is more than one of each shop. There are six H&Ms in the space of four roads. This is not necessary. Nothing stands out in the shop windows. Everything is the same. Every t-shirt, jumper, and dress are the same. Okay, so the candidate should have used is instead of are because it's every, every t-shirt is the same. Every jumper is the same. Every dress is the same. The bohemian rock and roll vibe has gone and the mainstream things have taken control. Okay, so we are definitely in a futuristic setting where things are less individualized. If you're looking for a bike or two, don't bother with Amsterdam. They have all gone. Not a handlebar to be seen, not a chain or bell. And here the triplet or the list of three, list of three technique, is used for descriptive and rhetorical effect to pass judgment. Not a handlebar to be seen, not a chain or a bell. Okay, so remember, use the techniques that um, are described to you in the book, in that first part of your, of your textbook. Um, all of these things create some sort of effect, and that's what your marker wants to see, that you can use things to create an effect. Now, now everyone takes to their hoverboards. <laughs> yes, futuristic. As state of the art as they, um, as they are, they are, they are just not a bike. There's nothing comical about the bad quality or walking past, and there's nothing left but a single wheel. 
So here the examiner said there's unclear what bad quality refers to the hoverboards or of the bikes you used to see in the past that you could have a laugh at. It's unclear, it's ambiguous. So the thought has not been properly formulated. Okay, and this is the kind of thing that you need to pick up when you edit your answer that you've written. Okay. All right, so as well as hoverboards, electric cars have really taken Amsterdam by storm and everyone has one. They also have very big cars, very unnecessarily. Instead of having bike parts, there's a constant demand for multi-story car parks. And there was a stunning error. Will this interesting lifestyle change continue to grow? Now, this I found, I would have commented on this because everything so far has been seen or portrayed, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, in a negative light. The, the canals are muddy. Everything has become a uniform. Um, there's these big, horrible cars that have taken over the delightful bikes that were there before. And so when the student uses, well, this interesting lifestyle change, is it really an interesting lifestyle change? Or is it a negative lifestyle change? Um, is it um, a destructive lifestyle change? So just be careful with the, the words you choose. I think interesting sounds complimentary, but the person has not been complimentary so far. So don't choose something that is complimentary. So will this lifestyle change continue to grow? I hope not. The people of Amsterdam are unwelcoming and somewhat grumpy. Every citizen storms around like they have somewhere very important to be, even if they are just going to the nearest supermarket to buy some jam. There's almost no people having a catch up in a cafe. Um, having a catch up in a cafe. Sorry, where am I? Uh, okay, there's almost no people having a catch up in a cafe with a nice sandwich, probably because they've spent half an hour on Skype, and that was satisfactory. They don't have a buzz about them. It's as if they have lost their sting. Okay, so perhaps here's a metaphor that's being used. Um, they used to be buzzing bees. You could have some sort of sting, some sort of character to their to um, their their nationality, to the way they would do things, but now they're just grumpy. And to the contrast, 50 years later. And so what they wanted to add was the people of Amsterdam are always smiling. <laughs> Obviously, what happened here is that the candidate pointed out certain focuses, they focused on the canals, they focused on Anne Frank's house, they focused on the bikes, they focused on, um, and now they and then they decided to focus on the people. They realized they could have added something else. And then they also realized they hadn't added that in the first part, so now they're gonna add it. And what the examiner says about this is that this is part of the first piece. The candidate has managed to add another detail to structure the contrast between the two pieces. So that's good, it continues this idea of contrast. But this seems like an afterthought. Hence, a brief plan would have been a good idea. And so although you'll see here is a plan, um, they do write some key words. It is not developed enough, I don't think. Um, they didn't think about the people at this point. And yes, plans can change, but it's very hard to manage this sort of thing. And, um, I don't know how badly you would be marked down on having to add an afterthought. It does happen, so, but markers will be aware of it. So it just depends which marker you get and how they feel about this. But um, this marker acknowledges that it was a good and a bad thing. Okay, so the people of Amsterdam are always smiling. Everyone you walk past is in a deep conversation with someone else. They cycle around talking, laughing, and having a really enjoyable time. When you walk past cafes, every table is occupied by friends or families talking and sharing stories and tales. Their happiness and excitable sense of life radiates the entire city. Uh, the word throughout is missing, radiates throughout the entire city. And then the final comment is imaginative touches, some appropriate sense of audience. So there is this continuous sense of who is being addressed as the audience here, the kinds of things that are being told to the audience. Overall, this person was awarded 11 out of 25. So it's not even quite a pass. Let's have a look at how the candidate could have improved the answer. 
a number of errors were made. The candidate could have checked for subject verb disagreement mistakes. So that's where you saw S's on verbs where they shouldn't be or vice versa. Fragmented sentences where there's an incomplete thought that's written as a full sentence. Missing words, as we saw with throughout, and spelling errors. They're, they're, they happen throughout the whole thing, but not in a bad way, it's just occasional. The description could have incorporated more specific details of people and activities to add to the atmosphere. And this is what I was trying to say about Anne Frank's house. Yes, it's from the outside, it's described as being sandwiched between some buildings, but then the inside is completely, nothing is, is portrayed, nothing is evoked. And remember with descriptive language, you want to create an atmosphere, you want to create a mood. You know, even if they'd explored how depressing and dark and, and suffocating, something like that would have added to that mood of this descriptive piece. A bit too factual, or should I say too superficial in parts. Okay. The language used was a little unvaried. The candidate could have used more ambitious vocabulary, different ways of starting sentences, and using varying sentence lengths and types, so maybe short shot sentences in some places, um, and longer, more convoluted descriptive sentences in other places where it is called for. There were a few attempts at language effects, though not always successful because of the lack of variation of devices. So we saw a few similes. It was a bit of a metaphor at one point. And there was some rhetorical questions once or twice, and there was a list of three, but I think the marker wanted to see more exploration of devices. I would have wanted to see more exploration of the senses. I think with descriptive language, you've really got to focus on the senses. So this sits at the bottom end of a C grade. Okay, so they, it's, it scrapes through, basically. But it's at the bottom end. Um, let's look at common mistakes candidates made in this question. The examiner expected candidates to write either a narrative or descriptive piece of work in section A as a whole in the imaginative writing section. Okay, so you're either going to do narrative, story, or a descriptive piece, depending on the command words in the question. So for example, Write the opening to a story in question one, which we didn't look at, but write the opening to a story in question one is asking for a narrative, isn't it? Story, you see that word story, you know you've got to create some kind of story in there. And this has to be narrative. So this is understood by the word story. Whereas, write a descriptive piece called the view from the window in question three was asking for a piece of scriptive writing as it clearly stated. So in other words, Pay attention to what is being asked of you in the question. Other important words were the focus areas that each question contained. For example, question one asked the candidate to create a sense of suspense and mystery. Whereas question three wanted the description to focus on colors and light. For question two, the one that we've looked at, the command words were write to contrasting pieces. The question was asking for a description of a town in the present day and the same town in 50 years time. The focus words were to create a sense of place and atmosphere. The words place and atmosphere clearly referred to a description of a setting, though elements of dialogue could be incorporated to evoke that atmosphere. So Yes, you can use other devices like dialogue if you want to, but as long as it is adding something to the description. Oh, look at that amazing tower. I can't believe it, I exclaim. Okay, something like that would work as long as it is focusing on description. Candidates sometimes did not focus on the instructions within each question. For example, suspense and drama for question one and a sense of place and atmosphere for question two. Because I think for question two, with this contrasting piece we've looked at, there's quite a lot of detail to, uh, in the way that things are described to an extent. But do we get a feeling? Do we get a, a real feeling for the place? I think that could have done, that could have been done a bit more um, in, a, in a more uh, sort of a nuanced way. Um, the use of more adjectives, the use of adverbs, um, the creation of more imagery rather than just 
factual things like there's an H and M, there's a thing, there's a thing, like give us a bit more healing. Okay, so that's what was lacking. I felt for question two, um, time management skills were lacking at times. Overlong narratives in section A, so spending too much time on section A on any on whichever question you chose, often led to short underdeveloped answers for section B. So in other words, when you go into the exam, make sure that you've got a watch or something to keep time with, or maybe there'll be a clock. You make sure that you do not spend more than um, an hour at least on each question. So let's have a look here. Uh, the paper will tell you exactly what time you, you're allowed to spend. Remember, two hours. Okay, so an hour maximum on the first section and an hour maximum on the second section. And for at least, you want to be reading for at least, um, or planning for at least five to 10 minutes, let's say five minutes of that, of that time. And then at the end, you also want five minutes just to read through, edit, look at the question, did I answer, did I focus? So in essence, you really want to try to get your production of the piece down to about 40 minutes, 45 at the most, okay? It's, it is, it's a juggling act, but all right. Just, you need to be aware of these things. Planning is key. It is the key to succeeding in these kind of exams. Some candidates do not spend a few minutes writing on a short plan to ensure the sound and effective structure of an answer. The lack of a plan often leads to diffuse or scattered rambling work. Some candidates struggled with syntax, sentence structure. They either created comma slices, that's where you have two full sentences that should be complete sentences on their own, but instead they're joined by a comma or ended sentences with outlaying verbs. So there was uh, a full idea was not, was not there. 